Okay, so in the lecture eight, I'm going to. So today I'm going to talk about general equilibrium, externality, and then uncertainty. Okay. For general equilibrium, um, actually the problem serving the actual general equilibrium model, it can be a bit complicated. It depends on the problem, but even the simplest problem can be a bit complicated. And so for general equilibrium model, I'm going to ask questions in the, in the final as just a true false question. Okay, you don't need to calculate anything here. So you just need to understand, fully understand the concept. Okay, all right, so, so what is general equilibrium? Uh, it's simply, that we are considering multiple markets all together, right? Uh, previously, so far, we always considered just one market, right? Market, one good, you know? And you get the demand, aggregate demand in the market and aggregate supply in the market and uh, mm -hmm. under perfect competition, the the intersection gives you the equilibrium, right? It was simple, but in general equilibrium, I mean, in, in reality, we live in uh, many markets, right? <coughs> there is many goods market, labor market, you know? and the market of energy, market of resources, you know? And what we see in reality as an equilibrium price, they are all interconnected with each other, right? Your, the goods market affect your wage, and your wage affect the goods market, the energy market affects goods market and vice versa. All right, so here's, we will see some example how to solve the general equilibrium model, okay? So basically, this is a concept, you know. Households apply the resources. Firms use the resources to produce the goods, but everything affects everything, right? They de they demand capital and labor from the households. Households apply capital and labor, but households demands the goods. Business supply the goods, okay. All right, <laughs> okay. So, so let's consider this example, okay. So this is a bit quite complicated problem. There are just not one type of household. There are two types of households, white color, blue color, okay. So here your model is a lot more complicated. So blue color, the number of household is given, labor's capital, okay? And the household earns income by supplying their own resources, okay? Mostly labor, okay? White color, so they supply resources and they earn income, okay? <coughs> so there are two industries, okay? Energy and food. Okay, these are supplied by the two different firms. Oh, sorry, two types of industries. Okay, and there are many firms in each market, in each goods market. And let's assume that there is two input, labor and capital. And let's assume that they are supplied by the household. Okay. And each type of household has their own utility function. They are different. Okay, right, each household has different preferences. And let's say energy producer has this kind of production function, Cup Douglas, okay. And food producer has this kind of production function. Let's say that all the, each firm in each industry, they are all identical to simplify the problem, okay. All right, so it looks quite complicated, you know? You have the labor market, capital market. Labor market is, is about the wage. Capital market 
is about the equilibrium uh, uh, rental rate of the capital, energy price, food price. You know, there are four markets all together, right? So how do we decide on the simultaneous equilibrium that will clear all the markets all together simultaneously? Okay. So yeah, you in if you have to solve the problem, you have to consider all these equations all together and you make sure to clear all the markets, then you will have like 20 equations or something. <laughs> And then you have to solve the equations. But we but you don't need to do that in this class. Okay, so let's try to have intuition. Okay. So four major markets. No? Energy, food, labor, and capital. Right? Household, demand, energy and food. Firms supply energy and food. Firms demand labor and capital. Household. So they demand each other and supply each other between biz firms and households. All right. So the key is that in every market, demand has to be equal to supply. Okay. Energy demand. Energy demand um, from household equals the firm supply of energy. Okay. Food demand from household it goes sup supply from the industry, okay. And firms demand labor, and that has to be equal to the household supply of labor, okay. So this is the basic four equations, okay. This is called the market clearing condition, okay. All right. So each household they solve their utility maximization problem, okay? So on top of this market clearing condition, you have to solve each problem, okay? Utility maximization subject to their income, okay? Their income is earned by supplying their labor and capital, okay? That's that. And using the, their earned income, they buy energy and food at the market price, PX and PY. Okay, we, we call X is energy and food is Y. Okay. Yeah, it looks quite complicated. <laughs> and yeah, you, you solve this problem, you take to maximization problem. And then the number two, you think about the firms. Okay. Firms, they demand curve. They the the demand curves for the labor capital come from the cost minimization. You know how to do this, right? Minimizing your cost. W is the wage, L is the labor, capital. Okay. You solve the cost minimization. Okay. And then. You know that they are. Hmm, you have the supply curve, supply curve of food, okay, and then you have food and energy supply curve from labor and capital, and they have to satisfy market clearing condition. So basically, you solve, you have this market clearing condition, and households solve their own utility maximization problem. Firms minimize their cost, and then, and then, yeah, the supply equals demand in each market: energy market, food market, labor market, capital market. Okay, but I yeah, you don't need to do this exercise. It's very yeah, it's complicated. Just need to. Get the idea what is the general equilibrium? That's all. Mm. Any question? Okay. All right. Let's move on to externality. Okay. 
So we have talked about externality before. You remember bandwagon effects, snob effect in our while we were studying demand, okay? So I consider externality as an unexpected outcome out of economic activity, okay? You nobody intended to produce the externality, but it's it's produced, okay? All right. So here, um, how we can incorporate externality in our equilibrium? For example, pollution, think about pollution, okay? Pollution is the negative externality out of economic activity, okay? So in the presence of pollution, in the presence of negative externality, okay, what is the best way to make decision, okay? So in you remember in the lecture six in the beginning of the lecture six, I talked about the invisible hand, right? If you assume under perfect competition, if you assume a very ideal society that has no externality, no crime, no, no problem in the society, right? Then. Any government intervention will lead to dead weight loss, economic loss. Okay, your total surplus will be reduced. Okay. However, here if you take into account the externality, okay, let's say in your model there is externality, pollution, negative externality. In this case, government intervention actually um, uh, increase your total surplus. Okay, if the government doesn't intervene, you will have less total surplus. Okay, and we will see from this very simple example. Okay, all right. So, um, so this is a chemical factory, and this chemical factory, as they increase their uh, output. So MEC is the cost of the pollution, okay? As they increase their output, they produce more pollution. And that is the cost to the society. It's a cost because it harms people's health. It affects the global warming. Okay, so as they, this industry produce more and more, the cost increases, cost of the pollution. Okay, so that it, let's call it a marginal external cost. Okay, marginal external cost, MEC. Okay, all right. So let's say there is a demand, aggregate demand in this market, chemical. Okay, and this this MPC, this is market supply. We just call it, in order to separate the concept between MEC, okay, the pollution, the cost including collision, uh, the cost including the pollution, let's call it market supply as MPC, marginal private cost. Okay, but it's just a usual market supply of the firms, aggregate supply. <clears throat> okay. And let's call MPC plus MEC, MPC plus MEC, that's equal to MSC. Okay. Let's call it marginal social cost. So marginal social cost means Marginal cost plus marginal cost is the, just a pure cost, additional cost of producing additional output plus pollution cost. Okay, so basically this MSC to get this to reach this height of the MSC, you have to add up MPC plus MEC. MPC plus MEC, okay, that will become 
MSC. Okay. All right. So let's compare. Okay. Let's say that the um, government doesn't do anything. Okay. Let's let's compare these two equilibrium. If government does something, you can push your equilibrium to P star, like Q star. So and but if the government doesn't intervene, the equilibrium will be original equilibrium P1 and Q1. Right? So basically it will produce more than the government intervenes for the pollution Q star, right? So let's see, let's compare the welfare, okay? Which is better for the society, okay? So if the government doesn't intervene, um, if if the equilibrium is P1 and Q1, okay? If that happens, what is the total surplus? So consumer surplus is what? So consumers pay P1 and they buy Q1. So the consumer surplus will be A, B, G, K. A, B, G, K. What is the producer surplus? Producers receive P1, and this is a marginal cost, right? Then, then some cost. So producer surplus is, is EHNFR. Okay. We are not done yet. We cannot say CS plus PS is the total surplus because there is this pollution cost. Okay, so what is the pollution cost? Let's say minus, minus, let's say I'm gonna just say pollution. Z plus V is the cost if you produce Q1, right? This area is the pollution cost, Z plus. However, Z plus V is equal to this area, right? Right? Because MSC is equal to MPC plus MEC. So pollution is R H N G K M. So let's sum up everything for the total surplus. So what is it? You will have Everything cancels except A, B, E, K, and then minus M. A, B, E, K, minus M. So that is a total surplus without intervention. Okay. Now, let's, let's assume that you can somehow push your equilibrium to P star and Q star. by putting some tax. Okay. So how do you push So So this one, uh, talk about how we put the tax, how we push this price to P star for the consumers. Let's see how they do social optimum consumer. So if you can push your equilibrium at P star, Q star, okay. So in this case, 
Consumer, so there is no tax, okay? So consumer surplus will be A, this, if this is the optimum. Customer surplus is A. Producer surplus, B, F, R, H, G. B, E, F, R, H, G. Right? But this is impossible in reality. Anyway. So let's say you can push the equilibrium to P star Q star. Okay. Then this A will be consumer surplus. And then this area will be producer surplus. Okay. So you are going to produce only Q star, right? And then to get the total surplus, you have to take out this part. Z is equal to RHG, right? So basically, so, but this is impossible in the, in the reality. You will see later how you can pay, how you can impose the tax. And actually this part will go to the government. But anyway, so consumer surplus is A. Producer surplus is B, E, F, R, H, G. Pollution, there is less pollution and less production. Pollution is R, this is Z, Z is equal to R, H, G, R, H, G. So you do everything together, total surplus. Let's say it's a social optimum total surplus. Ah, sorry, minus. Then you are left with A, B, E, F. So what is the dead weight loss if you... If you don't impose, you know, if you don't impose the social optimum, you are wasting the area of M. That will be the dead weight loss. Dead weight loss by not implementing, by not uh, by not pushing your your equilibrium to P star Q star, okay. Then now let's see how we can push naturally push the equilibrium from P one Q one to P star Q star. It's by the tax emission fee. Okay, so if you have a tax, there will be consumer price and producer's price, right? So this is the imaginary imaginary uh, supply curve, the marginal cost curve, supply curve from the perspective of consumers. Okay, so with a tax, if you impose tax from the from the view of the consumers it looks like supply curve is shifted up by the amount of the tax right all right so the intersection right supply demand the intersection will give you the producers uh, the consumer's price p star is actually pd okay okay so so by imposing a proper tax emission fee, you can change your equilibrium from the original equilibrium, okay, that gives you dead weight loss, to the new equilibrium, okay, and that will give you higher total surplus, okay, and eventually the society will produce less amount.
okay because of the pollution so so with this let's do the welfare analysis it's very similar but it's the difference is that this now pd minus ps is the tax it goes to the government okay goes to the government and actually welfare analysis is quite the same as before okay so this having this if you compare with this having just this social optimum is kind of impossible to achieve how are you going to enforce your equilibrium to be here right But this emission fee naturally induce uh, induce your production from Q1 to Q star, right? And then to minimize the dead weight loss. All right. So if you do the welfare analysis again, okay. So with the emission fee, your consumer surplus is A. And your producer surplus is Q star is the production, okay. FR. And the government collects tax. For each amount, like Q star times P star minus PS. So B G E H. Okay. And then there is pollution. Q star production. It's Z. Z is equal to R H G. So you sum up all together to have the total surplus. Sorry, minus R H G. Then the total surplus will be simply A B E F. So basically it's exactly the same as before, right? In the previous example with the social optimum, your total surplus was exactly this area. Okay. The difference is that this the the middle rectangular area goes now goes to the government. But before it went to the producer. Okay. But the previous example again is uh, not achievable in reality. This is more natural way to reduce the dead weight loss. Okay. All right. Now I will give you some time to do this example by yourself. So by solving this example, you are going to see how you are going to determine how much tax you are going to impose to achieve the desirable outcome. Okay, you just need to get all the intersection, that's all. Okay, I'll give you five minutes. <laughs> 